Hello and welcome back to the Peculiar Place podcast. This is the segment Two Vs in a Pod and we're your hostesses. I'm Mandy. And I'm Jessie. And we're in our same little get-ups as the last podcast mm-hmm. because we're filming two at one time. Um, but hello and welcome. Just to give you an update, we're going to put a number on the screen of how many patrons we're at because two weeks from now when we're filming this, we're not going to know. But if you're a visual watcher, you'll see on the screen what we're at. We're trying to get to 300 by September 1st to continue our podcast. And until then, we're doing 30-minute episodes. And if we can reach our goal, we're going to move up to uh, an hour, hour and a half podcast again Mm -hmm. and continue for another year. Mm -hmm. So thank you to everyone who is a patron. We appreciate you guys so much. And the exclusive episode this week is going to be me dishing the, the tea about the previous owners of our house. We had so much drama with them. Uh, Police were involved. It was crazy. Our grandmother was accused of being a stalker, basically. (laughs) It was a lot. So if you want to see all that drama with our previous owners, check out Patreon. Wild. (laughs) It'll be linked down below. Okay, so we're going to get right into this. Uh, Last week when we were talking, I had a couple other questions that we didn't get to. Okay. And I think this next one is very important because we are sisters and people on the internet have been asking, if your sister committed a crime, would you help her cover it up? So if I did something and I came to you. Depends on what you did. Okay, so I don't know if I murdered somebody. I wouldn't help you cover it up i wouldn't what's the word you wouldn't call the police no you wouldn't no does it depend on why i did it no really are we allowed to say that (laughs) (laughs) i definitely wouldn't report it but i would encourage me to report it yes okay what if i um like i robbed a bank and i had a mask on so no one knew it was me but i told you that i did it i would just listen are you serious yeah oh my gosh i love you would you report me see i don't think i could i i think i would struggle to report you for anything now i think there's levels to it i think if let's say over the next five years you were going downhill and every week you were doing something i think it would reach a point where i was like i can't do this anymore like i need to come forward dark but like if it was a one-off i would rather cut you out of my life then report you same so i would never get to a point of reporting you i would be like i can't be a part of your decision like i can't be i can't hear it anymore but i will never report you so i'm gonna leave out of your life and you can continue doing what you're doing but know that you don't have me anymore if you continue yeah that's fair but i would never report you i think that would shock people i feel like if a lot of people watching right now I think they would say they would report their sibling if they did something really, really wrong. So maybe we're, like, on another level. If you were, like, a serial killer wearing people's faces. Okay. Yes. Like, but, like... But even then. No, 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 no. No, No, definitely not. If you were, like... (laughs) Okay. Never mind. I was going to say, like, Jeffrey Dahmer or something. You would report me. Yeah. Obviously. Yeah. I think if it was, like, gruesome serial killer vibes. Right. I would report that, but... Because then I never knew you. I never knew you the way I thought I knew you. Right. But if you just, like, murdered someone by accident or one time on purpose. (laughs) Just one time. You get one go. (laughs) Like, let's say say if you were, like, R-worded. Okay. And in that moment, you, like, stabbed them in the face or something. I'd be like, okay. They deserve it. Good. Like, if you didn't do it, I would have. Like, yeah. (laughs) You know what I mean? So it's like. I feel like we're starting off this podcast with a bang. I feel like we've already angered 30 people. (laughs) Why? I think this is a a less popular opinion. Honestly, what we're talking about right now, like being that, what's the word? I can't think of it right now. Dedicated to each other that we wouldn't let anything really break that no matter what the crime is. I think that's an unpopular opinion, but I also think a lot of people aren't close with their siblings and maybe don't share like what we share. Yeah. Like we're on a deeper level, a different level. I know. But not everyone can relate to, I guess. I know. But also maybe people have better moral compasses than we do when it comes to um, what you should and shouldn't report. But I don't think it's about moral compass. Because to me, my moral compass says be loyal. Right. And also my moral compass says that I wouldn't be a part of your life if that was something that you were doing. Like I couldn't be a part of it. But I wouldn't report you. But it's not only me you would do that for. I assume your husband and your child. Ooh. That's different? Ooh. 
So what are you what are you hemming and hawing about? Because if my <laughs> husband killed somebody as a man, I don't know. That's like a lot darker to me. I don't know. Okay. It depends on the reason, I guess. In my child, I don't know because I'm their mother. Like, and you want to teach them. It's different. Okay, that's interesting. My role as a wife is different than my role as a mother is different as my role as, as a, a sister. sister. Yeah. I feel like my husband and my daughter, I don't have a choice to leave their lives. Like, I I am a part of their lives forever, no matter what. And right. I have a role in what they're doing, no matter what, if I like it or not. Yeah. Like, I don't know. I, I would definitely have to do something. Like, I, I wouldn't, like, report. I would probably, same thing, try to encourage them to report it. And maybe if they didn't report it, then I would have to. Wow, this is so dark. This is a deep question. It's hard. Yeah, yeah. how I do you like, know? I feel like it's very complicated. It really just depends it's on... It's situational. It would depend on what happened. <laughs> because my husband is so close to me in my everyday life that anything that he would be doing in that way would directly affect me if I am a part of his covering it up. And you'd want to protect your child. Let's say he did go off the rails. Exactly, exactly. And I don't want to go to jail. If he's doing something and I live with him and I'm a part of him, like, you know what I mean? Like, I don't want to be a part of his up to end up in jail and be away from my daughter right obviously like i'm loyal to him too it's just that it's more seriously gonna affect me in the long run with his decisions and her decisions than it would be if you were doing something right that's true because you're more at a distance than my husband and my daughter yeah i'd probably get in trouble i mean you'd probably still get in trouble if they found out that you knew what i did (laughs) (laughs) anyway I feel it, like I'm an accessory to murder if it's my husband. Right. By the way, no one's offing anyone. Everything's fine. It's a silly it's a question. Complica- it's complicated. I think it's situational. Yeah. I don't know. So I'm reading this really disturbing book right now. <laughs> Wait, are you going to answer the question? Oh, didn't I? What about I said you? I wouldn't. What about I, Ty? Um, same with you and Luca, I think. If he, like killed someone i would report it yeah if he did a smaller crime that i feel like was warranted for some reason i wouldn't yeah obviously i also don't have a child that i would need to think about in protecting or whatever so i don't know i don't know okay that's fair we're not gonna get in trouble for this are we no no one's committing crimes everything's fine (laughs) (laughs) i think it's fine just (laughs) okay so I'm reading a disturbing book. It's called The Fisherman. And it's super weird. It's very Pet cemetery vibes. Oh. And I was having, like, nightmares about it. And by the way, this might be potential spoilers, but I doubt anyone watching is going to read this because it's a very niche book that no one really knows about. It's like a literary horror sort of novel. It's about these two men who their wives have died. One guy's wife died of cancer. The other one got hit by, a, like, a truck. It's awful, actually. And they hear about this stream where they want to go fishing because they both love fishing. They go out and fish to, like, get their minds off of the grief and stuff. They find out about this one stream. It's in upstate New York. It's called um, Dutchman's Creek. And they've heard whispers that you can go there and say goodbye to your loved ones or have one last, um, like, conversation with someone who died that you you know, wanted to have closure or whatever. Mm -hmm. And so they decide to go there and it's super creepy because literally you cast a line into the stream and you like pull out your deceased loved one and they resemble kind of like a fish. Like it's hard hard to explain. It's like they're scaly, but they're still, they look like a normal body, but they're scaly. The way they speak is almost like in like bubbles. Like it's like they're speaking underwater to you when they speak and the octave is really, really low. So they almost sound like they're literally speaking out of a corpse. Like it's, they don't sound like themselves. And it's creepy because you cast the line and it'll hook around like their lip or whatever and you'll pull them out. And it is so eerie. And then it goes into, like, the history of that area in upstate New York from, like, the 1700s and people who used to go... Is it a true place? I don't think so. I tried looking it up on the map and I couldn't find it anywhere. Okay. But, yeah, I was talking about the history in the 1700s, how people used to go there. And sometimes they would take that loved one home when they shouldn't. And they would start, like, rotting and getting... It's so eerie. It's very Pet cemetery vibes. That's cool. I gave it two stars. Oh, 
it's a little bizarre for me. I, I, I don't know. I like the idea of it. Uh, yeah, it sounds but cool. Maybe the execution was weird. Maybe I'm making it sound way more awesome than it was. I was disturbed, but not in like a fun way. I don't know. Like I wouldn't read it again. I don't even think I'd recommend it, really. Are you like me and are you into like um, sad, depressing movies? Mm-hmm. I love those. Okay, so I've got <laughs> two for you to watch. Okay, I, I'm wondering if one is the one I just watched. Because I just watched one that everyone was talking about. It's really, really sad. Okay. <laughs> you need to watch Manchester by the Sea. Okay, I haven't seen that. Heart-wrenching. Heart-wrenching. I love that. You got to watch that. Okay. And Beautiful Boy. Okay. Beautiful Boy with Timothy Chalamet and um, Steve Carell. You love your Timothy Chalamet. I You do. really do. I do. But, like, in this movie, he's a heroin addict. And it's a... Um, oh, yeah, you've told me about this. It's a true story. It's a true okay, story yeah. that is also gut-wrenching. Okay. It's really dark and really sad. Didn't Leonardo DiCaprio do one like that where he was like an <gasps> addict and he was like Basket- screaming? Basketball Diaries. I saw a TikTok just showing a clip of it where he's screaming oh, at the door. At, for his mom. For his yeah, mom to let him in. I, yeah, to give him money. So is it that kind of vibe? Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's brutal. But very, very, very realistic. Hmm. Extremely realistic. Yeah. I watched one called All of Us Strangers. Okay. And it's the guy who's in Normal People. I, I love, love him. Normal People. So it's about like um, this condo complex and these two gay men meet and one's like in the closet. He's ashamed of it and like his whole family like treats him badly when they find out. And then the other guy's like out and he's cool with it. And it sounds like there's not much to it, but the twist at the end is so gut-wrenching that I was bawling my eyes out. It is brutal. It actually goes... I don't know if this spoils it. It kind of takes a supernatural turn. Not a scary one. He's dead. I can't say. (laughs) I can't say. All right. But it's really sad. It's really sad. Normal People is the one with the girl with the burn. It's not One Day. One Day is different. Okay. No, yeah. Normal People. It's the Irish... I liked Normal People way better than One Day. I think it's on the same level because they're so different. I loved Normal People. It was really good. So I was going to mention this, and I don't know if we're too late on it, but because Dad just completed a race this weekend, it kind of reminded me of that viral video that was posted on TikTok (laughs) of this woman. I guess she was completing a marathon or Mm -hmm. some kind of Mm -hmm. race. As she was nearing the finish line, about to win, her husband was on the sideline with her two little kids, and he was holding their hands, and he was pulling them onto the racetrack as the wife was about to finish. And she ignores the two kids and the husband and runs across the finish line and wins, and she's so excited and basically leaves her kids and her husband in the dust. And so the internet was kind of divided on it, saying that, like, no, it was messed up that he thought to bring his kids out there to slow her down because she would have lost. So I never have seen the division of anyone angry at her. Really? I have. My whole feed is people angry at him, which I agree. Maybe I'm on the wrong side of TikTok. I'm angry angry at him. him. Yeah. That is so wrong for him to be doing that. And because it makes her the bad guy, and it shouldn't be. But I don't think he had that intention. (sighs) <sighs> to make it like that. A lot of people were like, oh, he wanted her not to win. He want-. But I think he just wasn't thinking. Like, he was an idiot. And he was like, oh, the kids would love to cross with the pictures. And she would love to have her kids run with her he across the line. He has no consideration for her hard work, her devotion, her wants and needs. Right. Because he's not thinking about it. But that's, that's a problem. What, that's what makes him a bad guy. Because he has no consideration and no respect. To me, that's disrespect. Because imagine if it was the roles were reversed and it was a man doing a sport about to score a f- touchdown or some shit and the kids ran onto the thing. It would have been so much more serious because it's like, oh, men and their sports and they take it seriously. And, oh, like it's a woman running across the field. Like, who cares? Like, her kids can distract her and get in the way. Like, you know what I mean? If there's just like a level of disrespect. Or he views her as only a mom when moms have all kinds of other things that they love to do. This was her moment. Right. That's what I mean. He should have had those kids on the other side of the finish line for her to finish and, and run hug. to them. Yeah. That's how it should have been. Because also, what is that doing to the kids? Because they're going to think, oh, mom doesn't want to take and me And he did that. Yeah. He did made that. Yeah. I hate him. <laughs> <laughs> that guy. Yeah. Definitely frustrating. I have a game I want to play. It's called, is this an A24 movie or did I make it up? So I'm going to say a little like synopsis 
and you're going to tell me if you think it's an A24 okay, movie. Okay, I, I think I'll... I'll get this. Right. One of these is your favorite movie ever, so I'm Midsummer. sure. <laughs> I'm sure you'll know it. A man checks into a hotel where guests must find a romantic partner within 45 days or be transformed into an animal of their choice. He made it up. No, it's real. <laughs> A24 movies are absolutely messed up. Okay. Like anything you can think of can be an A24 movie, really. A struggling artist discovers a mysterious paintbrush that brings his paintings to life, but each creation has increasingly dangerous consequences in the real world. A24 movie. It's made up. <laughs> You're going to get one of these right. It's going to be the one that you love. All right. A group of friends travel to a remote Swedish village for a once-in-a-lifetime festival, only to find themselves ensnared in the cult's terrifying rituals. Midsummer. Yeah, that's real. The best movie. I don't know how that movie's in your top movie. I mean, the gore, the disturbing factors, it's the same person who did Hereditary. It's deeply disturbing. But I had similar feelings to Hereditary watching that movie, so I don't know how you did it. It's very disturbing. It is. A man suddenly begins appearing in people's dreams, leading to a series of bizarre events as he tries to understand his new, unexplainable phenomenon. A24 movie. It is. Isn't that the one with... uh What's his name? Joaquin Phoenix? Oh, is it? I don't know. I never watched that movie. Or Joaquin. It's like Joaquin. Joaquin. What did you say? Joaquin? I said like Joaquin. <laughs> Joaquin. Joaquin Phoenix. Are you going to watch the new Joker movie? Of course. It's a musical, girl. Of course. But do you like that it's a musical? I don't think it's a musical. I think that it's just Lady Gaga is going to be singing sometimes. And that's so fine. a musical. It's not a musical. A, a Star is Born, that was a musical. No. You don't think that was a musical? No. She sang every 10 minutes. But she didn't just <laughs> sing, like, on her own in in a living room so is that what makes a musical yeah you have to sing in the plot yeah but if you're singing on stage it doesn't count no you're performing so daisy jones and the six wasn't a musical no i don't know people sing music musical No, no a group of college students discover a hidden cave in mexico that grants them temporary superpowers however the powers come with a dark cost they must face together made it up yeah A botanist discovers a rare flower with healing properties deep in the Amazon rainforest, but it attracts the attention of a ruthless pharmaceutical company determined to exploit its secrets. (laughs) It's real. No. Oh my god. This makes me want to watch an A24 movie. Yeah. But I'm trying to think. I don't think I like any of them, (laughs) but I've seen so many. The Backrooms. Oh my gosh, we should should talk about that. There's going to be a Backrooms movie. And I'm so excited about it. I and have high hopes, but, it, like, it has potential, but it also has potential to be really bad. Like, but who better to do it than A24? I know. And speaking of, that hotel that we went to for mom's birthday, we found the back rooms. <laughs> we literally vlogged being in there because we went to the bottom level. And it was endless hallways of nothing. No doors on the walls. And it was, like, yellowy tinted. Back rooms are very easy to find. They're everywhere. Ew, that's so creepy, though. They're everywhere. That's why, like, backrooms have a familiar vibe about them. Yeah, something empty but nostalgic. Liminal space. We've talked about liminal space. It's a weird... You know what I... How I feel about it? I think when you see, like, backroom videos and stuff, I am far more freaked out by the emptiness than when they, like, make creatures in there. Because then you're not alone. There's creatures. You do not want to meet those creatures. I don't want to meet those creatures, but I feel like it's worse to not see them. My favorite are the ones in, like, abandoned, like, kids' playgrounds where they go down slides and stuff. Mm, I love those. And, like, the ball pits and, like, the tunnels and stuff. Or the pool rooms. Pool rooms. So the pool rooms I actually find um, somewhat soothing. Same. Something about the water. Yeah. And it's not, like, a yellowy um, tone like the back rooms. It's very... No, it's, like, calming. It's very 90s. Yeah. I cannot believe that people used to have water beds. I would throw up. <laughs> I'm just thinking about the 90s and water. Oh, my God. Our parents had a water bed. Did they? At our old house, yeah. Really? And, like, anytime someone moves, it would, like, jiggle. <laughs> it would jiggle. jiggle. It'd be, like, Horrible. lying on a cruise. Horrible. Remember in the Goofy movie, didn't they have a water yeah. bed with fish in it? Yeah. You're just crushing those fish at nighttime. It's awful. There'd be, like, algae and stuff in there. Mold. So I found a couple creepy facts that um, are really strange that I'm curious if you've heard about before. Chainsaws were originally invented for childbirth. 
I don't know what they were doing. Did you hear that, like, women are supposed to give birth um, in a seated or standing position? Mm -hmm. And that the reason why you, like, lean back is because some male doctor back hundreds of years ago felt more comfortable delivering a baby in that position. Mm -hmm. But naturally, you're supposed to actually be in a standing, upright position. Yeah, gravity. And it's actually easier for women. But for some reason, now... Also, if you get the epidural, you have to be lying down because you are numb and you can't move. Oh, true. Yeah. So it's strongly encouraged, actually, if if you don't get the epidural, to stand. They encourage that? Or squat. Yeah. Like I didn't know midwives they... and stuff. People that are More like more like natural at home births yeah, and stuff yeah. know what's up. It's estimated that there are around 25 to 50 active serial killers in the US right now. Uh, but I can believe that. Think about how many people go missing with no explanation. Yeah, and like think about like homeless people and like so, like that aren't even like known about there's plenty I'm sure a lot of serial killers go after the people that no one would even notice that they're gone that's true I think you sent me that one video of that um boy I his, still think about it his, I think about it almost daily it his, me up yeah so bad. his mom found a decapitated head, head head and hands in his closet yeah and he had literally gone to like a homeless man and like just offed him mm-hmm. for no reason no motive yeah that's the that's the worst part is no motive that's when you know someone's really, really f***ed up. Yeah. No motive. And the fact that, like, he was, like, almost, like, excited to be telling the <gasps> I story. I think about that, too. I'm, like, there's a video of him getting, what's the word? when Not interviewed, but... Interrogated. Interrogated. Yeah. And trying to figure out what happened. And he was literally, like, standing up, acting out what he did. Like, reliving it. And excitedly, yeah. too. Yeah. He didn't even care. When the cops came to his house, they were like, do you have any idea why we're here? And he's like, or what did we find in your closet? Or something like that. And he was like a human head and hands. And he was like, you know, impressed to... Yeah, he was like, oh, it's about time you guys figured it out. Yeah. He did not look upset that he was caught or going to jail or anything. So creepy. Those really disturbed me a lot. Really For like nights on end, I can't sleep. That's what I'm saying. Like, I can't stop thinking about it. But like, if you did that, I would tell the cops <laughs> a human head and hands oh yeah my God. imagine how the mom felt this fact dogs like squeaky toys because they sound like small animals being crushed <laughs> i don't know about that well I-, I think it um stimulates their predatory nature true because something's screaming as they're yeah you think because mm-hmm. i was gonna say that can't be true because like for example like tumness and winnie They've never seen, like, a squirrel up close. They've never hurt a small animal. So how would they know what that's no, like? No, but it's it stimulates what's their, like, brain. The, the, they're, predatory, they're predatory animals no matter what. They have right. instincts. Whether it's taught or not, it's, it's in them. Yeah. Period. So the designers of dog toys had that in mind when mm-hmm. they... Okay. Stimulates them. Patients undergoing colonoscopies are most commonly put under conscious sedation, meaning the anesthetic doesn't actually numb the pain or even send you unconscious. They just impair your ability to form memories. So you're awake and aware of the pain at the time, but then you don't remember. I was put to sleep. I wasn't. I was put to sleep. You were full asleep during yours? Yes. I remember. They were like, okay, good night. See you in a little bit. And I remember my eyes shutting and then bliss. I am so jealous. I was awake the whole time. And, like, I don't remember a lot of it, but I remember the the doctor was talking to me. as Well, I had an endoscopy, too. Oh, at the same time. I think that's why they put me down. That makes sense. Did you not have an endoscopy? When I was a kid, I did. I had an endoscopy and a colonoscopy all at once. But for my endoscopy, I was awake. You were awake when they put it down your throat? They actually went through my nose and down my throat. So they went into my stomach through my mouth. Mine too. But they went through my nose into my stomach. Okay, I don't even (laughs) want to talk about this. Can we move on? (laughs) Like, because I know I'm going to have to get another colonoscopy when I'm like 30. Because we got polyps. Oh, yeah. They found polyps, which is what can cause Cancer. um, cancer. But ours were benign. But the thing is, when you have them... You got to get it done every 10 years. Right. And I had mine done in, in 2016. Uh, so that means in two years I have to have one. I have to have one oh, at 30. Literally the worst. And most, usually old people get them. 
And there's a risk to it, too. That's, like, the thing that I hate the most. Oh, because the skin in there, it can tear so oh, easily. Okay, 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 okay. Can we change the subject? Well, the last fact just says tarantulas can swim. Ah! <laughs> Ew! And I'm yes. disturbed because we're going to Barbados in December, and, like, there's tarantulas. That's the common, like, spider there. So you're saying that I can go to the beach? Dude, there's a lot of craziness at our house, bug-wise and animal-wise. There was a bat on our you terrace. You gotta be careful of those. There was a bat on our terrace. There was a moth this big. I swear to God. The wings, it's like what you see at the Butterfly Conservatory. I've had one of those at our house. Fluffy yeah. and thick, the body. They're cute. No. They're cute. No, no. It was huge huge and it's a moth i don't like butterflies and moths just, i hate them if you I took agree. away their wings what are they huge furry things with long, with legs. long legs like just because their wings are pretty but look at them for what they yeah, are though. how do you think i felt my best friend got married at a butterfly oh. conservatory and i had to stand up there and butterflies were landing on my shoulders and you just felt little it was pricks. hot as hell in there too yeah it was sweating <laughs> couldn't breathe and i had to do like three rehearsals in there we were like taking turns because we had got a really good spot for the view yeah. of the thing we were all taking turns leaving to get like to breathe imagine me there an hour before it was that. humid yeah i thought i was gonna faint it was humid and hot matt's brother was standing beside me and i said if i look like i'm gonna faint will you catch me and he was like yeah i'll catch you so like I couldn't believe the old people that were in there. I was like, oh my god, like someone's gonna pass out for sure. Yeah, beautiful wedding, but we almost died. Humid, <laughs> humid. <laughs> Anyways, guys, we're gonna close off the podcast. Um, I hope you enjoyed. Don't forget if you want to check out our exclusive clip on Patreon. We'll link it down below. And yeah, have a good rest of your day. We'll see you. You're gonna be in the next one, I assume. I don't know. We'll we see. never know. We never. <laughs> we honestly never know because I have a child and it's uh. Everything's sort of up in the air. It's understandable. But I'll try. Yep. Okay. Have a good rest of your day and we'll see you in the next podcast. Bye. Bye.